Our story began with the Charles Campbell Hospital and how it started its life as a Jesuit medical college, then became a veterans hospital during the Second World War, and finally, in June of 1946, it was re-established as a sanitarium for Aboriginal tuberculin patients. In the spring of 1946, the first Inuit patient was admitted to the Campbell Hospital, and by 1953, there were almost 3,000 Inuit registered in tuberculosis hospitals across Canada. Our people were sent from their homes to a place where their language and culture wasn't understood, and the treatment for TB was not only arduous, it was not easy to understand. Depending on where the TB was located in the body, you had surgery or operations to remove it. Imagine having four of your ribs removed and wax placed in your body for months. Imagine having a surgery called spinal fusion. Now imagine that you are undergoing these surgeries in the 1950s, without the modern technology that we take for granted today. All patients had to follow a strict regimen that was composed of four levels. Level one was the most stringent for the most seriously ill. It was strict and total bed rest. This meant that you couldn't leave your bed for any reason. This meant that some people were kept in bed for a year or longer. Level two meant the patients could sit in a chair once a month. Most patients were happy to get to level four because they were allowed to walk for short periods. This meant that they were going home. Imagine being confined to a bed for 24 hours a day, for months or years at a time. Now imagine that this bed is in a hospital far from home, family and loved ones. This relocation of our people was not only a trauma for them, but for their families as well. There are cases where mothers were away for several years and missed being with their children. There were children who grew up in hospitals away from their parents and their homes. Some people had faith. Others looked forward to getting packages from home, while others tried to visit with each other to help keep their spirits up. Everyone coped with the boredom in their own way but all needed something to occupy the long hours of tedious confinement to their beds. From time to time, relatives would come to visit, but it was expensive to travel, and with hospital stays that ranged from months to years, most people spent long hours with nothing to do. To deal with the loneliness, boredom, and homesickness, some of the patients began painting and sculpting, and still others made moccasins, parkies, jewelries, and other items, that helped them stay connected to their homes and the land that they missed so much and was so far away. However, while some survived TB and were eventually reunited with their families, there were others whose stories have a sadder ending. These are our people who lie here in these unmarked graves. These are people that didn't survive their illness and now lie here where our story first began. You may be wondering why they are here and they were not sent home. The reason is because the government decided that it would be too costly to send these people home after they passed away. 